Have you ever dreamed of a game that wasn't as simple as some of the other games out there? How about one where you aren't the hero that saves the world or a nearly immortal? One in which you can be captured by bandits and held hostage if they defeat you? Well, my name's Vulcan, guys, and let's talk about Outward. The story of Outward is what you make of it. It's different from the usual tropes that we see in the gaming industry today. You are not the chosen one. You are not a hero, and you're definitely not the most powerful being in the universe. The character you create is a simple adventurer, an explorer, somebody just looking to see the world and all of the magic that it holds, aka a standard-issued human being. Outward centers its focus around medieval fantasy with immersive realism. Well, I mean, as much as you can get in a game with magic and dragons, but this realism includes things from the survival genre. Hunger, thirst, exhaustion, which by the way is cured by sleeping regularly, so make sure you get your eight hours, and the weight of gear not only that you wear, but that you carry, and this affects your agility. You must have reagents or perform rituals to become effective in your magical studies. These are all things that Outward wants the player to feel, the burden and blessing of your choices. I mentioned rituals and reagents for magic, so let's talk about that just for a moment, right? Let's take a break. And if you walk down the path of a firecaster, you must actually craft and carry firestones in order to place a fire sigil. Once that fire sigil is placed, then you may cast, you know, fire sig fire spells as long as that sigil remains, just as many as you want. Just keep launch them out of there. But once that sigil disappears, so does your fire magic. How about telekinesis to control your chakra? For those that don't know what a chakram is, it's typically a bladed and barbed throwing instrument that originated in the Indian subcontinent many, many, many years ago. In most games, it looks like a buzzsaw disc that you control with your mind. Well, anyway, so this is the chakram, you know, it's your weapon if you specialize in telekinesis. But you don't simply throw it, right? You don't throw it and hope for the best. You actually control it with your mind. It hovers over your palm as you swing your arm and lacerate your enemies with a flick of the wrist. But all of this comes at a cost. You must perform a focus ritual that will enable your character to use telekinesis abilities for three whole minutes, 180 seconds, with a considerable cooldown. So make sure you plan accordingly because your enemies may be very resistant to telekinesis or chakram damage or physical damage, or they may be extremely resistant to fire damage, or that may be extremely weak. You have to plan your attacks and plan your kind of game plan before you get in there. So keep that in mind. Failure to prepare is failure to succeed. Now I mentioned the survival elements. So these are your typical, you know, hunger, thirst. We've seen them all and obviously as humans in real life we understand how these work. But in the gaming world, we're actually met with two that don't we we don't see incredibly often in the gaming world, at least me personally, and that's exhaustion and weight affecting agility. So exhaustion comes in many forms, right? You have heavy plate armor that you're running around in, your backpack being full, weighing down your character. And if you're in plate, don't expect to dodge or roll quickly, right? That's a given. But in outward, you have something else to worry about, and that's your backpack being in the way. Imagine somersaulting or trying to balance well with a heavy backpack on, right? It makes the entire experience awkward. So before certain encounters, you can actually remove your backpack, which will disable and remove your inventory option because you drop it and you no longer have all your bag slots because your backpack's behind you. But you can roll quickly, run faster, and jump higher once your backpack is off, increasing that overall agility. And this is an interesting thing that I haven't really seen before, right? Weight in the past has always been something that affects your movement and rolls, but you just dumped inventory and you can resume your speedy nature. Then we have the various environments and their effects. Like if you wear a plate in the desert, you're going to become exhausted, thirsty, and hungry much, much faster. If you don't wear warm furs in the tundra, you're going to freeze to death. These are all things that a typical survival person would understand, but me personally, I haven't seen these too often in games. These are all things that you must anticipate and prepare for. Side note, if you drop your backpack on the ground and you're playing couch co-op, online co-op, somebody can take your backpack and remove all your stuff out of it. So trust who you're playing with. Um, if you're playing with a friend, they can actually have the backpack on and they can leave their backpack back at their house, uh, which we'll get to momentarily, but you can have one person with a backpack, a tank that doesn't have one, so they can, you know, roll and be ag agile and everything like that, and create kind of a dynamic duo, so you can share a backpack type of thing. So I really like that system, I think it's kind of a really cool system, something you don't typically see. So let's talk about death. 
Death in a game like Outward is very unique from what I've seen in Red. There are different scenarios actually depending on how you're defeated, aptly called defeat scenarios. These are things like if you're killed by bandits, if your health reaches zero by the bandits, maybe you're, maybe you're dead and you respawn, or maybe you're actually captured, taken to a bandit camp where you wake up in a cage with none of your equipment and you're held hostage and must find a way out. Or maybe you're killed by skeletons and resurrected as an undead version of yourself. Now, the second one about the resurrection, that's a guess by me, but there are different experiences tied to various ways of death, and the developer actually said that some of them may be a positive thing, but he didn't elaborate, obviously, keeping some things secret. So I'm really, really curious to see what they have in store there. Let's jump to the world. Outward is composed of four regions. Each one is four square kilometers, or 2.5 miles, giving a total play space of 16 kilometers, or nearly 10 miles of play space. 10 full miles. That's a lot of miles. Each region is different, and they're separated by a loading screen. In fact, they're actually instanced from each other, which is interesting. So you reach the outer edge of the map, the play area, and you're greeted with a prompt to travel to the next region, or you can stay put. This was done due to a lore implication from what they were saying. Each region is actually separated by a long road, and they said it'd be extremely boring to try to run through it each time, so they did this. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that is the reason or not, um, or this one to create it this way. Part of me says yes to both. I'm not entirely sure. But each region will host one major city. And there's going to be six to eight large dungeons with smaller coves and caves kind of scattered about through the regions. These dungeons are pretty cool, though. So I did get to see one um, in a stream, and it reminded me a lot of Elder Scrolls personally, but there were others saying the game is very similar to Gothic 3 or Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, I never played Gothic 3, so I can't confirm that one, and Divinity Original Sin 2, I play, but I didn't really see the resemblance, so there's that, um, take it as you will. Now, these dungeons and caves are filled with different creatures and beasts to slay, so once again, prepare well. If you're dealing with a fire mage or a fire witch, don't use fire, that'll actually empower them, um, so keep that in mind. As for the regional cities, right, we talked about those, each region has one major city, they're bustling with tasks and side quests, right? You're for your adventure to go around and complete, which you will, by the way, you will want to complete those side quests as they help mold the story, mold the environment, and create the game around you. The tasks can be skipped, right? They're more of, hey, a merchant needs a small ingredient. Do you want to go to the forest and fetch a couple mushrooms? Those can be done at your leisure, so you know, don't feel pressured. But the side quests are definitely important. Now, these cities aren't just for vendors, though, right? I mean, they're there, but the player also has an option to buy a house. You can buy a house. There's housing in this game. Now, you start with your own cottage, right, in the starting zone, which is always good, but you can have one house per region, which is important because it actually acts as your stash or your bank for all your spoils of war, since the inventory space in your backpack is extremely limited, and I mean extremely limited. They didn't, you know... Yeah, they didn't go into housing or cities very much, so we're going to have to wait and see on that front. But <laughs> keep in mind, you're going to want to probably have multiple houses for each region so you don't have to run all the way to back to another region because there's no fast travel. So you'd have to run on your map all the way to the edge, go fast travel back. It's, it sounds like a mess. So get a house per region and start stockpiling that money. Um, speaking of the map, let's talk about that for a second. The map actually does not show you where you are. So there is no little indicator saying, you are here. It's all landmark based. So you open your map and you're like, okay, so there's a mountain to my east. Okay, there's a lake in front of me, that's good. Um, I can see a village maybe to the northwest. Okay, so I must be in this general vicinity on my map. And that's how you have to navigate. Because once again, guys, they're going for immersive realism. Maps in real life, like an atlas, doesn't show you where you are on it. Um, as much as we would like them to, so keep that in mind. Now, your character itself is created as any typical RPG would be. You have a character creator. Um, they mentioned that it's very basic and isn't actually the main focus as you'll be covered in gear. And believe me, you're covered head to toe in masks, helmets, leggings, gloves, things like that. But the character progression, now that is something that we do need to discuss. There are eight total trainers for Outward, eight, each one specializing in something different. The examples we received were actually like a hermit 
hidden off in the hills that harnesses the power of the wind and will teach you how to master the element of air if you are willing. Or perhaps a warrior that believes melee strikes are more potent when infused with the elements, bestowing that knowledge upon you on how to create enchants to place upon your swords and shields. They even went into uh, an example of an ability called a gong strike. And they said, if you have like a mace and a shield and you have an ice enchant on your mace and you strike your shield, it'll actually create an AOE ice effect to everything around you, but your enchant will be consumed. So be, uh, it's kind of a get out of jail free card. So use it wisely. Now, here's the deal though. We have to choose very carefully because we can only invest in three trainers via something called breakthrough points. Now these points are used to unlock the second half of a skill tree from each trainer. So each trainer has these skill trees and the first half is free. That's, that's not going to cost anything. You go, you can invest in it. You can learn some of the small, more simple things. But if you want to get into the advanced knowledge, if you want to get into the advanced knowledge, you have to pay for it. And you can only use three breakthrough points. So out of the eight, we can master three of the trainers. So you need to kind of plan out your, I guess, build ahead of time. So this really kind of sums up what we know about Outward, right? The game sounds interesting incredibly interesting this is what i keep hearing um as i was watching those streams as i was watching the announcement trailer is there is a lot of interesting stuff in here now i'm not sure how it's all going to function obviously these streams are typically curated the trailers are usually curated so it is what it is i'm not a huge survival fan um as you can see i mean things like i'm sure you guys are gonna be like vulcan man exhaustion's been in multiple games before um, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know Hunger and Thirst is. Or Vulcan, man, look, the weight thing. That Yeah, that's been in other games before. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And that's just not something that I typically spend a lot of my time in. So if there are other games that are doing this, fantastic. De definitely drop a comment below and let me know and say, hey, you know, actually this game did this too. So that way I can, you know, learn, love to learn. So keep that up. Um, but some of these elements are actually really interesting. And I think I will probably end up picking this game up. Um once it gets through day one it may be on a sale for me personally but outward like i said does offer couch co-op online co-ops if you have some friends you can get together you can die together succeed together um so that's cool but i think at very least i want to see how the launch goes and see how that plays out before i make any hasty decisions so here's a little info so outward is actually being developed by nine dot studio it's being produced by deep silver Dead Island, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Metro series, um, Pathfinder Kingmaker game. So they have quite a few heavy hitters to their title. I like Deep Silver. Um, I've always liked them. And the release date is February 12th, 2019, guys. So we have a little bit over a month before this game is out, which I really like developers that do that. So we're not sitting here in early access or anything like that for like two years. But I do want to get a conversation rolling about this game, guys. So what are your thoughts? What are your guys' kind of takeaways from the gameplay, from the stream? And what are your takeaways from kind of what we talked about? Um, is this a game that sounds interesting to you guys or a game that maybe, maybe not? Um, I'm kind of on the fence as well. So anyway, let's get chatting. And as always, guys, this has been Vulcan, and I will talk to you next time.